do they have in common? What are you up to? I'm compiling everything we know about Earth Pulse points, starting with what the ones in Ward Forest and Polymedes have in common. I'll compare those points with the ones that didn't have any hints. Then, I'll factor in everything I currently know about the Abbey's deployments. Once that's done, I'll match all that information against what we know about the locations Lafayette was able to sense. When that's completed, we should be able to tell which locations are more likely to house Aetherian. You're really going all out, aren't you? Must you sound so incredulous? If you're going to do something, then give it your all! There is no other way to live! R right I'm counting on you then. I'm not doing this for you. This is for me and for Lafayette. Do you even understand why that boy's trying so hard? Yeah, I do. Have you been practicing your dove impression, Velvet? What? No. Now, now. A performer in Mogilu's menagerie has to be more diligent than that. What if we're stopped at a checkpoint and the guards ask you to perform a trick? If that happens, I'll show them my trick where I devour an entire witch faster than the blink of an eye. Oh, that would be a sight indeed. But seriously, if you ever want some magic tricks up your sleeve, let me know and I'll teach you some. Just 10,000 gold each. Oh, hey, Velvet. You don't mind if I give Kudogane that orichalcum you fished up, do you? Doesn't matter to me. But do you really think he can make a weapon with that? Well, I don't know. What does the expert think? Conventionally, no, it's impossible. But when has convention ever stopped a demon? I won't argue that. We're dealing with the hardest metal in existence. But I'm ready to cast aside all doubt to focus everything on forging my greatest creation. If anybody can do it, it's you. Good luck, Kurogane. Yeah, best of luck. If you can make Rokuro stronger, you'll be helping me out too. Lavi said, I spy, I spy! Uh, I can't, Kamawana. I I've got stuff to... I spy with my little eye! Something that starts with V! <sighs> okay, I'll try. Uh, is it... Velvet? <laughs> uh, no fair! How'd you do it so fast? <laughs> Wait, Kamawana, I'm sorry. You don't have to cry. <laughs> Poor V. Hey, what do you say we track down another Therian? Sure. From what I can tell, the next closest Earth Pulse point is near the center of Midgand. Midgand, huh? The capital's not far from there. I wonder how things are now that Griffin's gone, though. Only one way to find out. Maybe so, but Aizen's not here, you know. You're right. I haven't seen him in a while. We should probably ask Benwick where he wandered off to. Yeah. Hmm? Uh, hold on. There's a letter here. On pretty cutesy stationery, too. Let's just have a quick look-see. As the cold turns bitter and the snow piles up on the mountains, I cannot help but think of you and hope you are in good cheer. As for myself, I am the same as ever, although I recently acquired a rare item that I shall be sending your- It's rude to read other people's letters, you know. Yeah, but how else are we supposed to find out whose it is? Does it say who the sender is? Uh... Uzfamewu Wexov. Who the hell is that? Probably someone on this island, if I had to guess. Hey! Anybody lose a letter? 
Do any of these folks look like the type to write a fancy letter? Point taken. It could be one of the pirates. Why don't we go to the docks and ask around? Fine, just don't forget our mission. Oh, can't a witch get a little downtime? No reply this time either? Eh, but she's doing okay. I can say that much. That's good to hear. I can rest easy then. Now's about getting that pot wrapped. I has got this new sunflower print, huh? How's that sound? Hmm. Yeah, that one's cute enough. Let's go with that. Did... Did he just say cute? <clears throat> Help you with something? Someone dropped this letter. Do you have any idea who it might- You didn't read it, did you? Wait, it's yours? We didn't read it. Much. You really didn't read it? N no of course not. Put this letter in with the package. Who's got it? When you ship with the Turtles Express, rest assured your mail is in good hands. If you're done here, we're ready to head out. Our destination is Midgand. Yeah, I'm all set. Was he sending a gift to someone? And with a letter, too. Gotta be a lady friend, that's for sure. You think? Either way, that letter was really polite. And did you see that penmanship? Yeah, I didn't know old Reaps had it in him. I can hear you two, you know. Ah! <laughs> Yikes! Better watch what we say from now on. Yeah. I noticed you've come up with your little name for the kid. You are the sentimental type, aren't you? Oh? Calling him Fee doesn't cost me anything. And it's not like I gave- That may be the case, but no one else has taken even that token effort. And in doing so, I wonder if maybe you were trying to encourage him to be his own being. After all, one requires a name before he can consider his own identity. Having been given a name, he realizes he is his own entity, separate from others, and a certain formless essence comes to life inside him. And you're the one who set that process in motion for the kid. Whether you intended to or not, you changed him from a puppet into a living being. So what's your point? I've been with you since the start of this journey, haven't I? Wouldn't kill you to give me a nickname, would it? I've never really thought of us as being that close. And besides... You just forced your way into the group. Come now! I know you've got a bigger heart than that! Surely you have it in you to give a nickname to a dear friend! We're not dear friends. And even if we were, I'm not good at nicknames anyway. Please! I'm begging you! Okay then. Moggy. Oh, come on, that's so obvious! Can't you put some heart into it for your dear friend? Fine. Lou. Do I look like an old man to you? You're not even trying! Okay, then. Witchy McWitcherton. Interesting. Well, if I had to rank it against 1,000 other nicknames, I'd probably put it at number 1,011. A nickname needs to have charm. It needs to leave a lasting impression. Sure, then. Hattie. Now you're just saying what you see! Bookskirt. That's not any better, either! Ms. Creepy Eyes. That's just an insult! Look. No nicknames based on what you see, and especially no slandering! Lil Miss Witch who smiles around you but stabs you in the back when you're not looking. Hey, that's personal information! Look, I told you. I'm not good at coming up with nicknames. Forget it! I should have known this wouldn't work! Aizen, what happened to those octopuses? Dial and Kurogane took them to the kitchen. They said they were going to make dinner for Kamoana. They're going to feed demons to her? Atheria needs malevolence to survive. That's why they carried them off alive. What do they plan on making? 
octopus ink pasta with takoyaki and fried octopus on the side, and Helvetian octopus carpaccio. Do they have a takoyaki pan here at the prison? Kurogane hammered one out with some iron, along with a large pot for the pasta. <laughs> Still looking like that? Takoyaki would hit the spot right about now, though. Octopus ink pasta, huh? Like squids, octopuses release ink as a defensive mechanism. But theirs is made of different stuff and is used in other ways. Squid ink is stickier and acts like a decoy. But octopus ink spreads out like a cloud of smoke. But squid ink has 30 times the savory flavor. So octopus ink isn't used in pasta all that often. Laffy told me the same thing. He said that's why octopus ink pasta isn't very good. Laffy said that? Yeah, so I ended up not making it for him. But I wonder... I guess it doesn't matter, since I can't taste it now. I'll taste it for you then. So make me some octopus ink pasta sometime, all right? All right, and I'll be sure to make some that doesn't come from demons. Hey, who did Aizen send that letter and cooking pot to anyway? I don't want to think about it. That walloping still stings. You've got to be curious though, right? Maybe. It was serious stuff. Whoever it is must be important to him. A lover, maybe? I love her. A child wouldn't be happy with that cooking pot, and a man wouldn't want it wrapped up so pretty. A young woman with Aizen's tastes, then. He'd be bound to fall for a miraculous match like that, right? I don't know. I bet she's that girl with the yellow umbrella. You really have a thing for her, don't you? I, I do not. That's not what I mean. Then pray tell. What do you mean? Huh? Eavesdropping, Eleanor? How unseemingly rude of you. Besides, Luffy said is free to like whomever he chooses. You're one to talk about eavesdropping, Moggy Lou. Anyway, it's just that the sunflower design on the wrapping reminded me of her. Now that you mention it, but does it really matter? He has someone to write to in any case. True. I can't help but feel a bit and What a nice way of summing it up, Velvet. So you were eavesdropping too, then. Uh. Say, what do you think about Aizen? Oh, so that's the kind of guy you're into, hmm? Huh. Not what I'd expect, but... No! I just feel there's something different about him. The way he picks presents, the objects that catch his eye. Oh, is that all? Boring. No kidding. All men have some kind of particular interest, big or small. I suppose that's true, but he seems a bit... shall we say, overly obsessive? Now that you mention it, he does have a tendency to ramble on about various topics. And it's not just the items he collects. There's more to it? Every weekend he eats curry for dinner, and every time we go into port, he docks at the third ballard. Come to think of it, I heard the galley crew complaining that he always needs his pasta cooked exactly the right way. And when he needs a new outfit, he always goes to the same tailor and returns with identical clothes and boots. It all has to be exactly the same size and in exactly the same color. Turtle says he's very nitpicky. Sounds like he's not so much picky as he is a pain in the ass. But I do see a different side of him now. I thought pirates were all rough and f but it seems they can be quite meticulous. Not much of a reassessment. <sighs> it must not feel great only ever getting tails, I bet. Nah, I don't really mind that much. It's way too late for me to start letting that bother me. Yeah, but wouldn't it be nice to get heads at least once? Hell, I know I'd like to see that, and I bet Laffy said here does too. I do. Right? That's why I've brought something a little special. Ta-da! What's so special about that coin? It looks identical to the one Aizen already has. But both sides of the coin are actually heads. And Kurogane make it for me custom. If both sides are heads, then not even the Reaper's curse can stop it. Well, yeah, but that's cheating. What's the point in getting heads if it's rigged that way? It's not cheating. It's called effort and hard work. How? If you always work hard and never give up, you'll make your own way forward. All right, I'm in. I'll get that heads for you. <sighs> ah, 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 ah. Wow! 
What? That crow just flew off with the coin. Those birds are attracted to shiny objects, I suppose. Damn it! I can't even win against a crow. Don't sweat it. I figured something like this might happen, so I had a backup ready. Go on, give it a shot. You'll show that curse who's boss this time. All right, here goes. I don't believe it! Now Prince Percival's griffin's gone and eaten the other coin right out of the air! Are you kidding me? Not to worry. I've got a spare backup. It's time to put that curse on notice. Right. Here I go. You gotta be kidding me. Reaper's curse or not, does it really have to go this far over a damn coin? It's fine, really. I had a feeling it'd turn out like this. Well, I sure didn't. Yeah, me neither. Hey, Aizen, is there, uh, anything we can do about the Prince's Hawk? Griffin, I mean. Every day, it goes out on these hunts or whatever, and brings back the weirdest stuff. It's making a real mess out of the deck. Hawks hunt. What's the big deal? Well, yeah. At first it was bringing back good stuff like seaweed and fish, things we could cook with. Sure, I was glad for a while. But then it started to escalate. Now we're talking 150 kilo amber cans and 350 kilo killer swordfish that it's catching. That's not a bad thing, is it? It just means more to eat. It is when they're being dropped from the sky onto the deck. Especially those killer swordfish and razor sharp bills. What if somebody gets run through by one? Can't you just warn the prince that his bird needs to be more careful? Yeah, we could, but he looks so happy watching his hawk, I'd hate to spoil it for him. Yeah, the prince looks so happy whenever Griffin is flying free. He kept grinning and asking Grocky all nice like if he wanted to fly some more. Grocky? That's what Kamawana kept calling Griffin. She says she came up with it by combining Griffin and Hawk. <sighs> this is probably the first time in the prince's life that he's tasted any freedom. His whole life he's only done what duty dictated of him. Letting Griffin fly was his first free act. To the prince, Grocky is an extension of who he is. So what are we going to do? Nothing, really. It's not like it really hurt anybody. But it's punctured some major holes on the deck! I'm sure even the prince knows when to rein it in. Let him have a little fun. He deserves it. I don't know about all that. I'd say the prince is letting his newfound freedom get the better of him. Hey, I was just up on deck and it looks like Griffin's caught an elephant tuna this time. An elephant tuna? That's the really big tuna that can swallow a killer whale whole, right? That almost sounds like a demon to me. Yep. Huge fish, gills like elephant ears. I saw it myself. From the looks of it, I wouldn't be surprised if it was a demon. It's crazy valuable. On a good day, it can fetch 20 million gold on the market. But there's something ominous about seeing it hovering in the air above the ship. 20 million gold? I take back everything I said. The Prince and Griffin can do whatever they want. Did she say above the ship? Oh, hell. Benwick, we need to stop Prince Percival. Aye, aye, sir. Hey! Don't drop that on the deck! Are you listening to me? ask you a question. What? You're an Earth Moloch, yes? Why live on the sea when your kind sinks in water? I live on the sea because I'm an Earth Moloch. I'd be curious to hear more. Eifried used to go on about how we should accept what we were born with. But one time he joked about the idea of a pirate who couldn't swim, and he laughed and laughed. I wanted to clobber him right then and there. 
but it wouldn't have changed the fact that I can't swim. I didn't want some predestined elemental affinity to control who I was. Instead, I underwent tough training to overcome it. Well, I guess that's one way to approach it. Did this training of yours bear any fruit? Well, as soon as I stepped into a river, a big flood brought down a landslide from the mountains and swallowed me up. Then, when I tried going into a lake, the seaweed suddenly multiplied and tangled around my body, nearly drowning me. And then, finally, when I tried jumping into the ocean, a huge whirlpool formed with me at its very center. Oh. <sighs> the Reaper's Curse at play? As far as I'm concerned, my Earth Affinity and my Reaper's Curse aren't much different, in that they've both shackled me since I came into being. This is about pushing and challenging the constraints I was born with. Huh. So, did you eventually learn how to swim? Pretty much, yeah. As long as I never let go of my portable life preserver. Oh. Falcon! 
some next. Cut! Slow down! No escape! We'll see you as a falcon! You're wide open! Wait, you want some next? Die! Take that! Look back! You're wide open! Not hurt, are you? No, I'm fine. The boss has given me a message for you. Says there's some sort of nasty demon running around in the Aldina Plains, to the east of Logris. She thought it might be the one you're looking for. Wasn't the Eastern Highway closed off from Logris? That was only temporary. It's back open now. If you follow the road, you'll reach Stonebury Village. There you'll find one of ours who actually saw the demon. You want to know more? That'd be a good place to start. Got it. Hey, that's the same direction I sensed that- Give Tabitha our thanks. Looking more and more like we're on the right track. We ought to go check out that Bloodwing story. Then let's start by going to Stonebury. Hey, Aizen, did I say something wrong back there? No. I just didn't think we needed to give the Bloodwings any information for free. Huh? He means the Earth Pulse points, kid. We're the only ones who know about them. But aren't we on the same side as the Bloodwings? We're not enemies with them. But I wouldn't go so far as to call them our friends, either. That's just how it goes in the underworld. Things can change at the drop of a hat. A poison hat. But how are they supposed to trust us if we don't show them trust in kind? That messenger knew our faces, even though we'd never met. He was here waiting for us, even though we hadn't told anyone where we were going. You're right! We hardly know this thing about them. 
And yet they seem to know every move we make. They could easily sell us out if it struck their fancy. They'll work with us as long as we're a useful ally in their resistance against the Abbey. But the more tricks we can keep up our sleeve, the better. We've got each other's back, but only as long as we hold a knife up our sleeve. That's what counts as trust in the Underworld. That sounds terrible, but at least you can trust that Tabitha's cooking will be tasty. <laughs> Can't argue that. This is everyone's first time to Stonebury, right? Why was it blocked off? Demons? No, there was a great tornado on the Aldina Plains that swallowed up a whole merchant caravan. Hundreds gone in an instant. The cooling of the climate is causing bouts of odd weather. Thunderstorms, heavy downpours and the like. Correct. The Abbey is keeping a tight guard on traffic through the affected areas. If it's open now, that must mean the tornado is gone. I wonder what sort of place it is. It's quite lovely. In the vast forest to the east, you can find gemstones, and it's teeming with rare plants and insects. The locals trade only as much meat and hides as they need, and they live peaceful, quiet lives. You sure know a lot about this place. It's where the Norman he first fell in love with grew up. Yes! Please don't embarrass me. Though we are apart from each other now, our hearts are still as one. Immediately after you and I made our pact and set off, she fell in love with some macho Norman and moved away. What? Why haven't I heard about this? How long have you known? Oh, I don't know. Maybe I found out during my long search for you. Or maybe it was right after we left. I remember leaving something in the village and going back to... Oh, well, not like it matters. It does matter! There's no sense in crying over a fickle girl. Come, Stonebury awaits. If I'm in this, I'm in this 100%. The Eastern Plain is finally open for travel. I hear that the people of Stoneberry are alive and well. My husband and I can breathe a sigh of relief. <laughs> I wasn't worried about him at all. He talks tough, but he was really worried. Oh, sorry you don't know who we're talking about. It's his apprentice. What kind of apprentice? My husband's an architect. Even the royal family and the abbey commission his work. He's been at the docks here on a job. He just finished and we're about to return to Logris. These people don't care about all that. Why did your apprentice go to Stonebury? He's young and talented, but a bit eccentric. He said he wanted to help create a new town, so he set off to the frontier. A craftsman has to focus on his work. Creating a new town, ha! He should know his place. But my husband didn't disown him. That boy's fearlessness reminds me of my husband when he was young. So you understand how he feels then? I didn't say that. If he thinks he has the talent, he's free to do as he likes. But if he doesn't follow through with it to the end, I'll be done with him. Did you hear that? He thinks the boy can do it. If you ever find yourself in Stonebury, go visit that boy's workshop. <laughs> right, I'll do that. <laughs> Sorry about my husband, he can be a real grump. Don't worry about it. I'm pretty used to people like that. 
Hey, what's that supposed to mean? I'm so happy things have been peaceful around the capital. I can come to the harbor to shop without fear. I heard that those demons that made a mess of the palace have been wrecking towns all over, though. But Shepherd Artorius and the fine folks at the Abbey are on the job. I bet those demons are quaking in their britches. Let's hope that case. Of course it is. Lord Artorius is incredible. The demons have been mostly cleared from the area around the capital. Your love for the Abbey and the Shepherd are great and all, but I'd keep it down. If you keep poking around the bushes, you might catch yourself a snake. Uh, a snake? There's a rage-crazed girl out there who hates the Abbey. She's a real viper, that one. She sounds awful. That's what I hear. Who are you calling a viper? Thank you.